Could you put your hands together one more time? And could you just say something wonderful to God right now? Could you just maybe even just close your eyes if you can and just give God a great big thank you, Jesus. A great big hallelujah. Let's do this too. Can you put your hands together for our wonderful praise team? For Daryl and the team and, and for our wonderful musicians who led us into the Holy of Holies. Amen. And then let's do this too. Why don't you put your hands together for yourself, for making it here, being here. Some of us had to get through some things to be here, but you're here right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's be, let's be seated. God is so uh, awesome. Anybody agree that God has been good to them? Was God good to you yesterday? He said all the time. Was God good to you last week? What about last month? How about last year? Was God good last year? <laughs> well, I believe that God is going to continue to be good uh, this year as, as well. Amen? Um, the, the ladies got together. I heard the ladies got together. Had a wonderful, wonderful time. They got a chance to go to one of our uh, uh, secret spots. Mr. Tokyo over there. So I'm sure you got some sushi and some uh, spring rolls and crab rangoons. And Is that right? I'm saying that right? Uh, and, and some wonderful little uh, vittles there. And uh, it's just good that when uh, the people of God can get together and enjoy each other's company mm -hmm. and be able to smile <laughs> and just enjoy being uh, uh, with each other without having to say praise the Lord after every sentence. Amen. <laughs> So then, uh, with that in mind, uh, coming up February 17th, uh, Sunday evening, is Chatterbox. Chatterbox is a marriage event uh, that we put on last year. We're going to put it on again uh, this year. And so then that is, uh, there's some information at the info center. If you go out there, uh, you'll learn all about it. And you can also register because uh, uh, last time we were here, we had to have a uh, fish and loaves miracle uh, and so then we want everybody to sign up <laughs> so we can be uh, completely prepared amen but isn't it good that you prepare an event like that and we had so many people come that uh, it was beyond what we were prepared for that tells us that people are invested Dr. Scott okay I need you to come right down here too late. Come on. You're messing up my service if you don't come down here. Okay. Now, I did not know you were going to be here. This is Dr. Kim Scott. Could you put your hands together for Dr. Kim Scott? And, and his beautiful wife, Mrs. Scott. Amen. I, I almost sometimes want to say Reverend Doctor. Right. <laughs> Kim Scott, and he is a big part of my history. You are. Uh, we were, no, I was teaching for you at ITT Tech for two years, and uh, I watched Mr. Scott go through uh, ups and downs and backwards and forwards, but he kept faith. He kept his faith the whole time. There were things that were happening, I know, that were heavy on him, and I was watching him go through it, but he was holding us up. And so he became an example. You became an example to me about what it means to live the faith, do what we're supposed to do, and minister to each other in the workplace. And he did it often. <laughs> Amen. And... Uh, uh, as him and his beautiful, beautiful bride were being married, I got a chance to go to their wedding and do a poem for them. I'm not about to do it right now. <laughs> but I got to, and, and I, that, that did something for, for me to be able to give back to you in that way. But a lot of the reason why we're here right now, and y'all don't know this, is because I met him. Because I met him. <laughs> Love you. Put your hands together one more time for Dr. Scott. I call him Dr. Scott because he does have a PhD, y'all. He is Dr. Scott. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. Okay. What was I talking about? Chatterbox. Come out to the event. You will be, uh, you will be blessed. Amen. And um, also, uh, Sunday, Sunday, February 24th, we're going to have baby dedications here. And so then if you want your uh, child to be uh, dedicated or uh, if there is a niece, a nephew, or a grandchild, uh, uh, just go out there to the Info Center Entrance 1 and give them information and uh, we'll get everything together for them to be dedicated. Amen? Amen. Well, the word comes to us today from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to jump right into it. And I'm going to utilize this chair today because I have a story to tell and I need to stick with the story. And you know me, I, sometimes I get a little excited. And so I'm going to use the chair to keep it together so I can tell the whole story. <laughs> Everybody ready? Okay. Now, musicians, I'm going to ask you not to go too far because I can feel you leaving. <laughs> but don't go too far because I'm going to need you in just a little bit. All right. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through uh, 9. I want to read that to you. It says, but I say, uh, but this I say, he who, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work as it is, it is written. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Amen. His righteousness endures uh, forever. We're, we're finishing this series that we've been doing on money matters. And what we're going to do is take things a step further in understanding that if, if I get all these things together, if I uh, get my financial life together, if I get work myself out of debt, if I learn how to give properly, if I get all that together, what could, what could God do? Everybody heard that? What could God do through me? So let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for power, your purpose, and the privilege that we have to sit under your word, Lord. So I ask you right now, that you would prick our ears, prick our hearts, Lord. Cause us to understand what your word says. Lord, we want to be more like you, Lord. And the way to do it is understanding your word, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we would hear what the Spirit is saying to us, Lord. That you give us eyes to see, ears to hear. Lord, I thank you right now for the anointing that makes, that makes teaching and preaching easy. And makes learning impactful. Change our lives. Refresh our minds. Lord, and lead us to the way that's everlasting. We'll be grateful for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A while back, I told this story, and I'm going to tell this story uh, again. It is the story of Bridget Biddy Mason. And some of you may remember this story, and some of you may not remember who this person is at all, but I think it's a good time for us to talk about this story uh, again. I came across this woman, uh, uh, Biddy Mason, as I was searching for a story uh, about uh, faith and, and grace and destiny as it revolves around uh, uh, what would happen if you got uh, your giving uh, together? What would happen if you understood what God wants to do in your financial uh, life? And so what I found out is that Miss Biddy Mason, she exemplifies how God's hand uh, reaches through his people. Amen? Her story is a powerful Christian story. It's a powerful American story. And so then we'll read more about her story in Heaven's Great Library. Amen? But I don't want you to see this as just a, uh, a, a little-known black history fact. I don't want you to see this as just a story of uh, 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 male oppression on a female. It's, it's a much bigger story, amen? So then now, what this story is, is a story of God's grace and his providence and how he has made us blessed to be a blessing. Why don't you look at somebody right now and say, you are blessed to be a blessing. 
you are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? So then the story of Bridget Mason begins in Georgia on August 15, 1818, where she is born a slave. And this story is really a rags to riches uh, uh, story. And I'm surprised uh, as I, when I found this story a few years back that I hadn't heard of this story before. Amen? But such great power is inside this story and such great power is inside all of your individual stories. Amen? There is power on the inside of your testimony. How many people agree with that? There is power on the inside of your testimony. So here's how this goes. Before she became one of the wealthiest women in the United States, decades later, God would have to move mountains on her behalf. And so uh, we have the psalmist Travis Green who comes to us, and Daryl sang a little bit of that this morning, how God moves mountains, how he calls walls to fall. With his power, he performs miracles. Amen? How many people need a miracle to happen in your life right now? Anybody standing in need of a miracle or just want to see God move? How many people, here's the thing, maybe you don't need a miracle, but you just want to see God move in a marvelous way. Amen? See, this is why I need the chair. Let's stick to the story. So then here's the thing. Miss, Miss Bridget, uh, affect, affectionately known as Biddy, being of African and Native American descent, was se separated from her parents and sold several times, being moved from uh, Georgia, Mississippi, and South Carolina. She endured many unspeakable hardships until she was given to Robert Marion Smith as a wedding gift uh, at the age of 18. But Miss Biddy would say this out of Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive, to save many people alive. And so then her, uh, Biddy being forbidden to learn uh, to read or write, she still cultivated her God-given talents in medicine, nurser, nursing, and midwifery, making herself invaluable. I want to tell some people this. Only God can measure your worth. Set a few minds free right now. Only the Lord can measure your worth. And if the Lord was to measure your worth, you would find out that you are worth this much. <laughs> you are invaluable. Amen? Amen. So then, uh, Biddy, what she did is she cared for, Ms. for Mr. Smith's wife, who was often ill and helped to deliver their six children while giving birth to and raising three of her own, Ellen, Anne, and Harriet. Even in this, Biddy Mason continued to endure while God was perfecting a gift of giving in her. So then we understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Amen? So then your night may be enduring. Anybody's night seem to be enduring right now? Just, just, just me and you right there. Your, my, your night is enduring, but God is no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he will do for another. If he brought me out, he's going to bring you out. If he took you through it and you came out on the other side not smelling like smoke, then he can take me through it and come out on the other side not smelling like smoke also. Amen? If God is preserving you, he will preserve you also. Okay. So then here is where, here is where we begin to see the moving of mountains. Around 1844, Robert Smith was converted to Mormonism. Robert Smith, the slave owner, was com converted to Mormonism, and on March 10th, 1848, he left Mississippi for Salt Lake, which is the center of the Mormon faith. 56 whites and 34 uh, slaves of both African and Native American descent then took the overland trail through Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Wyoming on their way to Salt Lake. 2,000 miles, 2,000 miles, and seven states later, or seven months later, Biddy Mason walked 
the entire way with her children. Think about this, behind the wagons and behind the livestock. Then she was walking. Now, I want you to get this picture. Have you ever ridden a horse? Has a horse ever stopped walking? When the horse stopped walking, what did the horse do? So let's think about this for a second. If she's walking behind the wagons and behind the livestock, all the livestock, now we're not just the horses, but we're talking about whatever other livestock they had, then whatever was coming out of them on the way, she was walking behind them. Are you understand what I'm saying? And she was taking her children with her, but all the time she was walking to something greater while she had to walk through some stuff. I don't know about anybody else. You might be walking through some stuff right now, but if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. She was walking through some stuff, but on the other side, on the other side, there was a greater glory. Amen? Look at somebody right now and says, there's a greater glory on the other side. There's a greater glory on the other side. Now, this is where I got to stay real close to the seat. Upon arrival in Salt Lake, Robert Smith was encouraged to free his slaves according to the Mormon belief. But he chose not to, but God. God was still moving in her favor. And she didn't know God was moving in her favor, but God, what I'm trying to explain to you is this, that there's times in our life when we are not, we can't see God moving, but God is always moving. He is always doing something, even in times where we think that God has left you behind, that, that God isn't even anywhere near you, he is still moving for you. So even in this situation, she might have heard about the Mormon, the Mormon faith and that she's about to be free, but her slave owner said, uh, no, we're not doing that. Amen? So here's what happened. Brigham, Brigham Young, the Mormon, sent a missionary group to San Bernardino, California. Robert Smith was part of that group and took everybody with him. Into where? California. Everybody say, California. Biddy Mason and other slaves walked behind the wagons again, not knowing that they were walking right into their freedom. What I'm saying is that if you can endure, look at somebody and say, endure. The Bible says that the race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But then we marry that with another scripture, but if you can endure to the end, then salvation is going to be there. Amen? How many people just want to get there? I just want to get there. If I could just get there, God, keep me till I get there. Amen? So then here's what happens. California was added to the United States as a free state in 1850. And according to the state law, once a slave entered California, they were already free. Smith arrived with Biddy Mason and her family in 1851. In 1851, him not knowing the spirit or, nor the letter of the law, he stayed there for four years. Stayed there for four years. She not knowing she was already free. What I'm saying is... <laughs> Somebody caught that already. You don't even know that you're free right now, and you're thinking the devil want to keep you think that you're bound and you can't get out of what you're in and you can't get any better than where you already are. But Romans 8:28 comes to us and tells us that God works all things together for good to those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Look at somebody and say, You're called, you're called, you're called. You're called according to his purpose. We are all ministers of reconciliation, every one of us called. <laughs> so can anyone hear the mountains moving 
Anyone hear the mountains move? Can anyone see God at work? I'm trying to tell you, this is big. This is more than just a, a little known black history fact. It's, it's more than this. You can see God's providence in this. Can you see it? So then what if you could step back and see God's plan? What if you could step back and see all of the things that God was doing, the things that you had to go through to bring you to where you are right now, the heartache that you had to go through? You understand? Let me speak to a few married people in the room. Can you think about the people that were in your life that God had to cause you to have a bad relationship with to get them out of your life so you can be with the one that you're married to right now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Think about all the things that God put. How many, how many people did it take for God to put in your life to get you to where you are right now? Who did God have to speak to and then bring them into your life and then out of your life and then bring somebody else into your life and then out of your life? And then here you are hearing this word and being encouraged to do greater things for God right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many people had to speak to them to get the wisdom to speak to you? If you could stand back and see what God is doing, we would all be amazed. So here's what happened. In San Bernardino, <laughs> Biddy meets free blacks, Charles and Elizabeth Rowan from Utah, and Charles Owens and Manuel Pepper. Now, Owens, Charles Owens, was courting Miss Mason's 17-year-old daughter, Ellen. And Pepper, uh, Manuel Pepper, was also in love with one of Robert Smith's slaves. And here is where God uses love in the next part of what God is doing. God can use whatever he wants to to bring about whatever it is he wants to bring about in your life. Amen? So then now love becomes the next catalyst for freedom. Amen? So by 1855 now, the anti-slavery anti sediment became so much that Robert Smith decided to travel to Texas, where he planned to settle or sell his slaves, but the journey was delayed. The journey was delayed because Hannah, <laughs> Biddy's uh, daughter, was near giving birth which made Smith's party camp in the Santa Monica Mountains. Nevertheless, Biddy was worried about being separated from her children by the time they got to Texas as she was separated from her own parents. So then here she is, not one to be separated from her children, and that's the main focus, and not wanting to go to Texas, but they were still in California, but they had to stop because another baby is about to be born. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 65, because I wonder if she began to pray right there in Santa Monica. I wonder, here's what the Bible says, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. I wonder if Miss Biddy was praying, God, if you could make a way out of no way. I'm not sure how this is going to work out, God, but you got to do something for me. She might not have heard the song that we heard today, that God is a way maker, that he's a miracle worker. You understand what I'm saying? But I believe she must have prayed something. But even if she didn't know what to say, maybe all she could say was Jesus. Anybody ever been in a situation that only thing you could muster, you couldn't muster sentences, you couldn't muster very eloquent things to say, but you could say Jesus. Anybody want to say Jesus right now? The thing about saying Jesus, if you could just speak the name, <laughs> the name that wind and waves obey, if you could speak the name, the, the name that bends, that, that, that causes mountains to bend, if you can speak the name that demons tremble when they hear it, are you, under, anybody want to say Jesus one more time? Anybody want to say Jesus again and put the devil on the run and just say Jesus? Anybody want to look at your situation right now and just say Jesus? Jesus. Okay, the story. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charles Owens, spurred by the potential loss of his love for Biddy's daughter, Ellen convinced his father, a successful businessman, to talk to the sheriff. He persuaded the sheriff to apprehend Smith after filing a petition that he was holding slaves illegally in a free state. The sheriff then issued a writ of habeas corpus, sent a posse, 
an actual posse and caught Smith right before leaving a state. God may not come when you want him to, but he knows how to show up right on. Somebody say next mountain. Next mountain. Freedom is now knocking at the door. You understand? Fast, forward, fast forwarding to, to, to Bridget. Bridget, Bridget Biddy Mason is now, she's in court. She's in court and we find an issue. Robert Smith made a claim that Mason and the other slaves were actually his family and they wanted to go to Texas. Mason was not able to testify against her master and had to remain silent in court. Somebody say stand still. Some of us talking too much. If you could stand still and just see the salvation of the Lord. So she had to remain silent. And to make matters worse, Smith, Smith, Robert Smith, the slave owner, bribed her lawyer to be a no-show on the court date. So what was Biddy Mason to do with no lawyer or advocate against her master who wanted to keep her in bondage? Well, here's what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Are you understand what I'm saying? In the courtroom, she didn't have a lawyer, but in the throne room, she had an advocate. Are you hearing what I'm There was no one to speak for her in the courtroom, but Jesus at the right hand of God was making intercession for the saints. God knows how to make a way out of no way. Look at somebody right now and say he's a way maker. Find somebody else and say he's a promise keeper. <laughs> Here's what happened. The judge, Benjamin Hayes, decided to do something different. He chose to hear the testimony of Biddy Mason privately. The law said that she couldn't testify in court. But it said nothing about testifying in another room. So the judge took her to another room to hear her testimony. And why did he do that? Biddy overcame by the blood of the lamb and the power of her testimony. Look at somebody and say, you got to tell your story. You got to tell somebody your story. Tell somebody. You don't know what somebody else is going through. They think they're the only person going through what they're going through. The devil got them thinking that nobody else has suffered the way that they are suffering. But if you open your mouth and stop being shamed about your past that you want to be delivered from, you get what I'm saying? Then you can tell somebody else how you got over so they can know that there is light on the other side of this darkness that they're in. Everybody get me? So here's what happens. <laughs> all of Smith's, uh, all of Robert Smith's slaves were freed on January 21st, 1856. But a whole host of other slaves weren't free until 1865. But freedom came early for Biddy Mason. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is because God did it one way in somebody else's life doesn't mean it has to be that way in your life. God might have taken 50 years for a person to get them to where they are. He might want to do it in you in 50 days. He might want to do it in you in 50 minutes. If you keep listening for 50 more seconds, he might want to do it right now. Everybody hearing this? Listen. Here's what happens. <laughs> Later, Charles Owens and Ellen Mason were married, but God wasn't done with the story yet. Somebody say mountains were moving. After this, what Biddy Mason once did for free, she was now being paid $2.50 per day. Now, this is the 1800s. While being fluent in Spanish, she became well known for her herbal remedies, midwifery, and also giving services to those unable to pay. After 10 years, she saved $250 and then purchased land in what would be Los Angeles today. 
this will be the beginning of her real estate entrepreneurship that is still operating in her family today. Proverbs 21 and 5 comes to us and tells us that steady plotting brings prosperity. Amen? So here's what happened. After building small homes on the property, she became a landlord for 18 years, sold a portion of it for $1,500, and then built a commercial, she built a commercial building on the other part where she continued to rent spaces. Bridget Biddy Mason quickly became one of the wealthiest women in Los Angeles by the late 1800s, amassing $300,000 in the 1800s. Are you getting what I'm saying? God gives us the power to get wealth. Why? The founder of our church, uh, who founded the church uh, many years ago, he said this, and I, and I want to quote him, that prosperity without purpose is only materialism. Prosperity without purpose is just materialism. And so it's, it got to be more about just, I want to be rich. Everybody hearing this? So then now Mason gave to the needy as lines would form on Spring Street in L.A., hoping to get her, to get her assistance. She donated money to grocery stores, daycare centers, schools, churches, and visited jail inmates regularly. She understood pure religion, which comes out of James 1.27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So then in 1872, Biddy Mason and her son-in-law founded. I want you to, before I say the next thing, you got to think about her life. Think about her life being born a slave being born a slave and enduring whatever it is that she had to endure. This is, look, this, this is bigger. Now, come on out of it now. This is bigger than racism. Don't get stuck there. This is bigger than that. It's, it's, it's bigger than just race relations. It's bigger than this. God's providence is on the move here. God, the moving of the Holy Spirit is here. If God wants to move, does it matter to you if he moves through someone who is black, someone who is white, someone who is Latino, someone who is Asian? If God wants to move, are you going to let him move however he wants to move? So then you got to understand, think about the things that she endured. Think about the things that she had to go through. And, as, and going through those things, still serving her community. Are you getting this? After walking through all that stuff, yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. And walking with her children who also had to walk through all that stuff. She was still carrying a hope in her. She was still carrying a, a bigger idea in her. She was still carrying destiny on the... What I'm trying to explain to you is this. There's destiny on the inside of you, just like there's destiny on the inside of her. So in 1872, here's what Biddy Mason did. With her son-in-law, she founded the first African uh, Methodist Episcopal Church of Los Angeles, where she donated the land on which the church was built. This place is still standing today. Still standing today. After Biddy Mason's uh, death in, on January 15th, 1891, she was buried and honored in California, in the California Social Work Hall of Dis Distinction, and is now celebrated in California on November 16th, 1989, as Biddy Mason Day. An amazing piece of artwork was, was created in her memory called Biddy Mason's Place, A Passage of Time, which is a eight by 82 foot concrete wall, which it, with embedded objects in downtown LA where Mason lived telling the story of her life. And then here is her quote, and I wanna read this to you. It says, if you hold your hand closed, nothing good can come in. The open hand is blessed, for it gives in abundance even as it receives. Everybody hearing this? So then now, why, why would we say, talk about this inside of this other narrative about money matters? It's because of this. God wants to do something greater. 
and God is no respecter of persons. If there's awesome destiny on the inside of Biddy Mason, why wouldn't there be some awesome destiny on the inside of you? So this is what we got to understand that there is a great work for us to do, that we are blessed to be a blessing, and God wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Amen? So this is how she gave to establish God's economy. She was out of debt and out of financial stress. She was free to give and free to live. So this is not just about getting rich, but it's about being used by God greater, being used by God bigger, about going further that you can, than you could imagine. Amen? What I want to tell you is this. God wants to do something in you that is amazing. Are you understanding this? Imagine, imagine now us all sitting around in heaven while God reads to us your story. I don't know what year you were born, but let's put you in the 70s or 80s. Some of y'all might appreciate that. And God reading the story, in 1979, this one was born. And here's what I began to do. And then you begin to understand the things that you had to go through and the wisdom you gained going through it, the strength you attained because you endured it, and then how many people were blessed because you went through what you went through while holding on to God's hand. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, you have a story to tell. You have a story to tell. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen? Let's all stand to your feet. Let's stand to your feet right now. I'm done. Amen. But what I want you to understand is this. God wants to do something awesome in you. Not just so you could just have things and just become materialistic. But there is a purpose and a plan for each and every one of you. What I want you to know is this. While Betty Mason was walking through all that stuff, she probably, probably couldn't see her family blessed like that. While she was carrying one child and trying to walk around excrement did she see the church built while she was suffering as a slave could she see black people white people Latino all being blessed by her efforts in California and all those who couldn't pay even if they wanted to, could she see all of them being blessed? I'm going to say probably not. All she kept doing was putting one foot in front of the... You don't need to know the whole plan. God, tell me my purpose, and then I'll start walking. Look at somebody and say, just start walking. Well, God, if you tell me the plan, if you tell me where I'm going, God looked at Abraham and said, go to this place. Where? There. Just start walking. The Bible makes it clear. I haven't seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has already prepared for him. Let's be like the instructions that God gave to Adam. Stop trying to know. Walk away from that tree of knowledge. And let's walk to the tree of life. Let's get life on the inside of us and stop trying to know everything. 
I'm going to pray for you. But right before I pray for you, I want you to do something just by faith, just by faith and agreeing with the word that you're going to begin to just start walking and forget about all the details. I want you to take one step to the right. Don't bump into each other. Just by faith that, God, I'm going to start walking just as easy as I did that, God. I'm going to start walking. Now, if you bumped into each other, that's all right. We forget, we'll forgive you. Just do this next time. All right, that was, that was you, Juwan, okay. <laughs> oh, that was, that was you. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to ask you. If there's any of us who say, Pastor, you know what? I want to have purpose in my life, but I just don't feel like there is purpose for my life. I want to ask you this. I'm going to ask you just to walk right down here. I'm going to pray for everybody, but you walking down here is giving that away. I, that, that, that No longer, I'm not going to walk as if I don't have any more purpose. Amen? If that's you, I just want you to walk right down here. I want to pray for you. If you know that there is purpose in your life, but you have difficulty putting one foot in front of the other. I want you to walk down here. I want to pray for you. Amen? By doing that, you're not saying that you are, uh, 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 it's not coming against who you are as a person or, or anything like that. It, it's, it's that takes strength to do it. You walking down here is what's taking the strength. Amen. Can you see all this purpose down here, saints? Put your hands together for all these wonderful folks. Thank you, Jesus. Paul made it clear. He says, I, I, I don't count myself that I've apprehended, but this one thing I'll do. I'll forget those things which are behind. I'm going to press towards the mark. I don't know what's going to happen when I get to that mark, but I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm going to ask everybody right here, all of you standing right here, just take one more step forward, just by faith. Now that's you, that's you leaving your fear behind. Amen. Now, this might get a little personal because it takes, it takes this next one to get personal. And I know some of you are already close to each other. But I want you to take one more step. Uh-huh. Yeah, it became uncomfortable, right? That's you leaving pride behind. Now you realize that you're not an island and you can't do it by yourself. It's going to take some other people in your life to do it. Amen. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. If you're back there and you want to take a few steps, come on down here and take a few steps right now. If you were back here and you know you should be up here, because this is just about stretching your faith. That's all it is. I tell you what I saw in the spirit. I saw at least three more people. <laughs> Amen. Put your hands together that you are walking right out of fear, walking right out of pride, right, walking right out of low self-esteem. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you are walking right out of defeat right now, walking out of defeat and into victory. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. That's wonderful. Could you do something for me, everyone here around the room? Can you just lift your hands right now? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these individuals, these people who have come to say, Lord, I'm giving myself to you. I surrender. I surrender to you, Lord. I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way, Lord. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. Lord, forgive me, Lord, for embracing fear more than I embrace faith. Forgive me, Lord, for embracing pride more than I've embraced humility, Lord. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus to set me free right now, Lord. Release me, Lord, into your purpose, into your plan, into your will, Lord. Lord, I can't see all the way down the line, Lord. But, Lord, I trust that you are the, you're taller than I am, Lord. You're bigger than I am, Lord. You can see further than I can. So I trust you to be able to see for me, Lord. 
So I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Lord, help me to keep on walking, Lord. Lord, when obstacles come up, Lord, and when walls come in front of me, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, that you will make a way out of no way, Lord. Lord, that you make a river in the desert, Lord. Lord, that you would exalt valleys, Lord, and bring mountains low, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for these individuals that have their hands raised, Lord, for their families, Lord. Lord, for the things that pertain to them, Lord. I thank you for whole household salvation, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the people, Lord, who will be blessed because of their testimony, Lord, because of the things that they had to endure, the things that you took them through, that it wasn't for nothing, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that it was for purpose, for plan, Lord, for the overcoming of many, Lord, to hear the things, the good things that the Lord is doing, Lord. That we thank you, Lord, we would have fainted lest we believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Lord. So I thank you right now for goodness to wash over us, Lord, like waves, Lord, to wash over us, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, for all of what you're doing, Lord. Lord, the good, Lord, the bad, and the indifferent, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. Lord, because you are the provider. Lord, you are the way maker, Lord. Yes, Lord. We declare you, Lord, the Lord of breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now that you release a breakthrough, Lord, in each one of these individuals' lives, Lord. Cause them to see what you're doing, Lord, in such a marvelous way and begin to run. Yes, run into your presence, Lord. Run into your safety, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We count it done in Jesus' name. 